Hello team and welcome to today's video. We're going to be taking a look at the if error function in Excel. If error helps you clean up your data and also keeps your formulas functioning as expected. This function can be helpful on its own or in conjunction with other formulas. We'll get started with the basics and explaining the function and how it works, but then we will get into how to use this function with other nested formulas. Timestamps will be below if you'd like to skip ahead to one of the other sections. To get us started here, we have a basic store spreadsheet showing store number, amount sold, and the total sales amount. And I would like to gather the average amount of each sale. In order to do that, I'll enter equals, click the sale amount cell, and divide that by the amount sold. After clicking enter, I have my average, but when I drag this formula down, You'll notice I get a common error here in the last cell. This error occurs because for the sale amount being zero, we divide by zero, Excel will give us this error. So let's try that function again, but this time we're going to add if error in the front to account for row four. There are only two arguments required in the if error function, the value and the value if error. The value we're gonna input is the same formula as before, where I take the sale amount and divide that by the amount sold. After entering a comma, I now need to input what the value of error should be. You can add a number or a text field here. If, for example, I wanted just zero to appear, and I would put zero in quotations because I don't want zero dollars to appear, you can close parentheses, click enter. Now when I drag this formula down, I just get a zero instead of the error that we got before. My data looks more clean and more professional. If we wanted to change this to currency, we could just remove the quotation marks around the zero, and now it would display as zero dollars. You can also add text to display as the value of error. Returning back to the original formula, I'll delete this zero and place the value of no sales instead in quotations. After I click enter and drag this formula down, Excel returns the value of no sales instead of the zero. For the value of error, choose the value that's gonna best represent your data and help you to more easily interpret the information you have stored. Now let's take a look at how the if error function can help your other formulas work as intended. Without entering if error, let me gather the average sale amount again. I'll enter equals and take the sale amount divided by the amount sold. Drag the formula down again, and again I get that divide by zero error. Now if I try and get the sum total for all my average sales, I'll enter equal sum, highlight the cells I want to include, and click enter, Excel is only going to display for me that divide by zero error because even though the first two rows contain legitimate values, that error in the third row is going to overtake the formula working as intended. But let's see what happens if I enter the formula again, this time with if error in front, I'll leave the average formula there as before, enter a comma. This time for the value of error, I'll enter zero so that it displays as currency. Close parentheses, click enter. Now when I drag the formula down, you'll see the if error function accounted for the divide by zero error and is just displaying zero dollars. It's also now correctly displaying the sum of the average sale amounts. This would work with text as well. So if I delete the zero, and then in quotations, put no sales, click enter, you'll see the formula still works as intended. Use the if error function to account for errors that may occur within your formulas and keep your formulas working correctly. Okay team, now let's get a bit more advanced. I wanna use VLOOKUP to pull in the sale amount for a given store number. But I have two separate spreadsheets here. They have both been placed on the same tab here just for visibility for the video, but they could be on separate tabs or even in separate workbooks and this function would still work. We are going to use the if error function with a nested VLOOKUP formula to find the sale amount for the given store number on both spreadsheets. We'll start by entering if error. The value in this case though is going to be a VLOOKUP function. The lookup value I'm going to use for VLOOKUP is the store number. The table array will be my first table for spreadsheet one up at the top, so I'll highlight that. 
and then click F4 to make that absolute. After another comma, I want to return the sale amount, so I'll enter a column index number of three. One final comma, and then I'll enter false because the store number should be an exact match. Close that parentheses. I'll enter another comma. The value if error in this case is going to be another if error function. The value again will be the lookup. The lookup value will be the store number. After another comma though, the table array this time is going to be the table from my second spreadsheet. I'll make that absolute. The column index number again will be three, and I'll enter false again for an exact match. Close the parentheses here. After another comma, Excel will ask me for the value of error. So if it's not on either of these two spreadsheets, I'll ask Excel to return not found. Two close parentheses and click enter. Now, when I drag this formula down, You'll see Excel is able to pull in the values from both spreadsheets. Looking at our formula, what Excel is doing is using the if error function and VLOOKUP to review the first spreadsheet for a matching store number. For the value if error, we are using a nested if error and VLOOKUP function to review the second spreadsheet for a matching store number if it cannot be found on the first one. If both of those fail, we're asking Excel to return a value of not found. So if I enter a final store number that's not on either spreadsheet, let's say the store number is 1010, you'll see Excel returns that value of not found. Team, I hope you found these tips helpful. Please like and subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and leave comments about additional tips you'd like to see covered.